On May 4th, 2015, Dr. Eli Somer, PhD, who coined the term maladaptive daydreaming disorder, always called it maladaptive daydreaming disorder, uh, he did a Huffington Post Live special that he uploaded to his YouTube site, uh, Somer Clinic, on May 5th, 2015. It was called, Is Excessive Daydreaming a Psychiatric Disorder? Nobody referred to it as excessive daydreaming until I did, back in February of 2013 when I started talking about this. Welcome to my show, Eli. Hope you like it. <laughs> Average dude has something to say about... Ta-da! New camera. Well, not all that new, but it's the first time that I've used it for this show. Um, the criticism that I've had on the use of my old camera, in other words, bad, crappy video, crackling noise, terrible, terrible. Notice I've never come down or given anybody grief over or that kind of criticism because it's, it, it was fair criticism. I was in agreement with them. I absolutely agreed. And now's the time to use a a better camera. i got to be careful with finances. I've seen way too many of my friends try to live the American dream and screw up big time and suffer for it. And I've avoided that because I'm a careful kind of person. And speaking of being careful, uh, identity theft is a big issue and something that a lot of people probably aren't aware of. I'm not a fan of, uh, of using like the, the cell phone cameras for the purposes of this because um, it's not that difficult to take the file and break it down and look inside the code. What you will see is information like latitude and longitude. It's very easy to find. That's the sad part of that. Yeah, latitude and longitude, uh, coordinates, and usually information on the, uh, the recording device, the, the video camera that you used. What is it? Uh, but date and time of the recording, but you got to figure that cell phones are tied to a, a, a phone plan, a person's name. So identity theft is a big issue. That's one that I take seriously. Now, there's another kind of theft that I'm not going to be overly concerned about, and that is, I guess you could say, idea theft. Uh, Somer, Dr. Eli Somer. I have spoken about this thing called maladaptive daydreaming disorder, excessive daydreaming, a lot because it's fascinating. And I've always had a problem with uh, the whole elephant in the room subjects, the situations that everybody pretends that it's not there, it's not happening. I don't like that. You should be able to talk about the elephant in the room situations. I don't think it's healthy not doing so. And when it comes to the excessive date, the people that are in la-la land and daydream a lot, that's really not good for them. It's not good for us as a society. Uh, when years ago, when, and I'll have links to my videos and this one that I'm going to be talking about of Somers. Uh, years ago, I brought attention to that. And I called it excessive daydreaming, Somer. Somer's watching my videos. He's at least watched one of them, if not multiples. Which makes sense, because uh, you don't find much on this subject matter. It's not talked about. Now, he's trying to make a name for himself professionally and have his name attached to groundbreaking uh, research and development, but uh, Somer, I would, and I've, I've said this before, I would not have called it maladaptive daydreaming disorder. In fact, that seems to be a problem because this all this jargon. You look at maladaptive, okay, maladaptive daydreaming, what, what's that? Hey, I've never heard of that. Uh, must be made up, that kind of thing. People are going to think that. If you say excessive daydreaming, everybody knows what you mean by that. Oh, yeah, those people that daydream a lot that walk around, pace, 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 and occasionally, you know, like they're talking, but yeah, talking to thin air. We've all known that these people exist. We all know that this exists. I would have called it excessive daydreaming. Now, it should have been treated like blood pressure. I've said this before. I am the only one that has discussed what this is really truly all about. And it shouldn't be that way. There shouldn't be anything special about me talking about this. Okay? Everybody daydreams. You've got 
People um, in this little Huffington Post Live production aired May 4th, 2015, that Somer uploaded onto his YouTube site, Somer Clinic. Go ahead and look at it. Uh, May 5th, 2015. And they seem to be under the belief that, that it's voluntary. It's not always voluntary. Daydreaming is like breathing. You can choose to do it, but you're not always going to choose to do it. Sometimes it just happens on its own. It's voluntary and involuntary. And I think that was the last episode that I talked about this, if memory serves me right. I'm the only one that's talked about that. I am the only one that has discussed that uh, uh, maladaptive daydreamer's worst enemy is free time. Having all that spare time, pace, 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 and <laughs> you got to figure if the family leaves and you're at home and you're and then occasionally talking, if someone had a camera on you and caught you with this, and then the family comes home hours later, what did you do while we were gone? Mm, not much. What do you mean not much? <laughs> You're not going to tell them the truth. Yeah, I was daydreaming the entire time. All those hours didn't get anything done. But I, it almost looked like this, this, this was being brought up. Okay, this production, it was a uh, Huffington Post Live. They included a contributor from the, uh, the Atlantic. And, oh, what's her name? Let me take a look here. Uh, Jane Biggleson. Sorry, I had to look. Um, she talked about what it was like to, to, have, to grow up with this. And she's got a... She, Scott Barry Kaufman, he's a, a daydreaming specialist, whatever the hell that means. Uh, professor, psychology professor Eric Klinger and uh, Dr. Somer, who's also a psychology professor, who coined the phrase maladaptive daydreaming disorder. Okay, now... They seem to think that this is voluntary versus involuntary. It's an issue of control, and they think that it is completely voluntary. No, it's not. And I've already explained that in terms that everyone can understand. No stupid jargon was necessary. Dr. Klinger, you got to be kidding me. Oh, and Scott Barry Kaufman... He gave the OCD brush off. That was to be expected. But what they all agreed with is that this needs more research. And I'm not even sure how much that, uh, that uh, Jane understood herself because she's trying to make breakthroughs on this and talk about it. She's a published author. Um, she seems to be under the false understanding that she is over it and she's, she's, uh, she no longer suffers from it. I've already talked about that, too. And it's something that these people that look for cures and get cured, they're going to find out the hard way. When life hits you so hard with a death in the family, an accident, something really tragic and traumatic, it's going to come back. And I worry that those people are going to feel like there's no hope at that point. It came back, they have it. No, he, he, let yourself go through it, survive, and you can thrive later. You can take the time to go through what it, what's needed to gain back control. I'm the only one that's ever discussed that. I'm the only one that's discussed the free time being the worst enemy. I'm the only one that's discussed uh, stress as the really the most uh, damaging of the of what's called triggers the triggers you will hear about are the usual crap the scapegoats books that bring on daydreams they're to blame books movies tv and games and all that crap i've heard it my whole life stress and dr klinger does not get this it quote I don't know that anxiety is that much a part of this scenario. Oh, it's not always an enjoyment. Clinger? Stress. When you have something bad happen, like if, if you have an account with a business and something goes really wrong and you're dreading calling the, the call center and trying to fix it, you're going through the scenario. Okay, who do you talk to? What number do you call? What are you going to say? And what are you going to say when you get a hold of this person? Because they always keep transferring you to again and again. Okay, think of how you're going to use daydreams, but they're not going to be pleasant. You're going to use daydreams to try to figure out how to fix the situation. 
it's not always pleasant. So yes, anxiety is a part of the scenario. I'm the only one that talked about stress as a trigger, and, but I'm glad that uh, Jane, uh, quote, uh, she mentioned uh, crying. I'm glad that she mentioned emotions because sometimes, uh, I'll tell you what, emotions are a big trigger. You can think about your kids. Uh, if you have children of your own, you can think about the person that you love, the love of your life. Or, you, you know, your daydreams can go in various directions, not always pleasant. You can be worried about what happened. Like if you're watching the news and you hear that someone got shot or something bad happened, you're going to daydream about something that happened that might happen to, to like your loved ones. We never want to talk about this. We all do this. This is actually normal for everybody. But you got to figure, for someone who daydreams a lot more than the rest, think about how, and then stress gets add, added on. It, it, they'll make you cry. They'll make you stressed. Okay? Only one that's talked about that, but at least uh, Jane has talked about the crime. She talked about spinning in circles in, in my front lawn, that's from her, in quote, half keeping up with the daydream and half keeping up with my friends when she was older. Uh, the first, uh, the spinning in circles in front of the lawn, the kids, when they're in front and they're playing ball, but daydreaming, and we've all seen them in the community, in our neighborhoods, when we're walking and we see the kids talking to thin air, they're having a daydream. Okay, we tend to overlook that one, but when you have adults doing, yeah, half keeping up with a daydream and half keeping up with friends, that's bad. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, Jane, when she said, I'm over it, you're never really over it. You don't get cured. Uh, it will come back when something really bad happens in life. There is another trigger that I want to talk about, and it's one that no one ever thinks about, and that's going to be the next episode. I do plan on talking about abuse. Somer, all of you professionals, watch and learn, because I do have something to share. You can learn from this. It, Child abuse. I went through it. That one's all too familiar. And believe me, I understand the link between that and daydreaming. Take care.